Are you starting to see how having a greater sense of self-awareness is going to help you to level up in your leadership and really to be able to take on those leadership positions with ease and poise and composure? If that's you, then in this video, I'm going to share with you four very simple ways on how to improve your level of self-awareness so that you can achieve these outcomes and lead effectively. So first of all, what is self-awareness? We hear this a lot in the news, in the media, social media, especially in all over the internet, we hear this term self-awareness. And there may be a million and different one, different definitions of self-awareness. But I wanna give you one distinction about it so that you can have clarity because if we don't have a distinction about something, it's really difficult to set a goal towards it if we don't know what it looks like. So when it comes to self-awareness, what it is is a state of mind. It's a state of mind, having self-awareness, being self-aware is a state of mind. And it's in that state of mind where we have consciousness. We are conscious of our personality. We're conscious of our characteristics and our traits. But on the flip side, we're also conscious of our motivations for certain behaviors. We're also conscious of our beliefs and our worldviews. We're also very conscious of our personal philosophies. And if you really reflect on your personal philosophies, on your worldviews and your beliefs as well, these are the things that drive your decisions and these are the things that drive your behaviors in moment by moment and also generally as well. So as you can appreciate from this distinction about self-awareness, once you do have a greater sense of self-awareness, it really does affect how you experience yourself. So why is it so important to experience yourself in a different way? Well, we all understand why it's important to experience other people's in certain ways. Because if you have a negative experience with someone else, it affects what your relationship is. And the same thing is true with how you have experiences of yourself. How do you have these experiences? What are they like? Are they, are they inspiring to you? Are they fulfilling to you? And that really affects your relationship with self. So that's why it's important to really design what is the experience you want to have with yourself. And therefore, it is a reflection of how you view yourself as well and how your opinion of yourself. So in this video, I'm going to give you four simple ways. Let's go. And by the way, subscribe to my channel. Ring that bell below as well, because every single week I release videos on this topic and so much more. So let's go. So I'm going to give you the ABCs, the ABCs on improving self-awareness. So every one of my points, the four simple ways, will start with A, B, C, and D. So the first point is point number A. A is to ask awareness-inducing questions. Awareness-inducing questions. What do I mean by that? These are the unasked questions of our life. We're so busy and we've been programmed by the school system that we're going to come up with the right answers. We've been programmed to look for the solutions, to be able to answer questions, come up with the right answer as well. And we've been programmed this ever since a very young age in school. The, well, while it is intelligent, it can be very smart to come up with the right answer. It is a genius to be able to come up with the right questions. And we are not taught in school or at work, we are not taught how to ask great questions. We're not taught how to ask the unasked questions. So therefore, when you are able to unmask these unasked questions across all domains of your life, then this is where it will really open up your mind to be more expansive at understanding who you are and what drives you, what motivates you, what truly that you value. And this gives you a greater sense of self-awareness. If you think about it, we're so focused on doing things. We're, we become human doings. We're so focused on doing things. We're so busy at getting our to-do list checked off. We're so busy at doing that we don't spend a lot of time at all on the who aspect of it. We are spending a lot of time on doing and achieving and accomplishing. But what about who we are, who we, who we become? And it's impossible to be able to do the things that are necessary. It's not possible to be able to do the things that are important either without becoming the person who can do them. So that's why it's important to be able to ask these awareness inducing questions, because once you ask these questions and you're able to go through the reflective awareness process of it, it expands your awareness of self. It changes your experience of self. And therefore you become a lot more conscious of the things that drive you. And therefore you can influence yourself in positive ways. So if you're somebody who's really serious around how do I ask myself these inducing questions, awareness inducing questions, and you're really serious about how do I become the person I need to become? I know the value of it, but I just don't know the steps. If that is you and you want these outcomes for your life because you want to be a better leader, because you want to be a better parent, or maybe because you want to be a better friend. If that is you and you want to be empowered in your life in these aspects and have meaningful relationships as well, 
then I invite you to come to my classes. Every single week, this is where I host and I teach you all aspects of how to have greater sense of self-awareness, how to empower yourself in all of these domains, but more importantly, how do you ask these questions? And remember, questions are your answers. And whenever you ask a question, it really does determine the outcome that you can produce in your life as well. When you ask a different question, your brain goes into seeking mode. And when you seek a, an answer to a certain question, the question you ask, if it's not a quality question, it gives you a non-quality answer as well. So the quality of our life and the outcomes we produce in our relationships are reflection, a reflection of the quality of questions we ask ourselves and we ask along the way. So in, below this video is a description and there's a link in, the, in the, the first link in the description below. And that is really an application. And this is where it's just an exploration. You'll get on a call with either myself or someone from my team. And we're going to explore whether or not this is the right fit for you. And if I could truly help you with what you're looking for. So if it is the right fit, you know, then we invite you in. And this is where every week you can develop this skill set. Every week you can hone and refine your self-awareness. But more importantly, you can empower yourself to higher levels of leadership. So this is ABCD and we're now on point letter B. So B is to balance your perspective about yourself. So when it comes to our own self perspectives, oftentimes we have a one-sided perspective and we have an expectation towards perfection. We have an expectation towards our performance. We have expectations towards our intelligence. We have expectations towards how we can create support among, along the way and how we can attract acceptance of our ideas and acceptance of ourselves. And this is a one-sided perspective because when it comes to you, you are more than just being accepted. You are more than just being able to perform. You are more than just being able to produce certain outcomes for your organizations, for your teams. So when you balance out your perspective, this is what allows you to be objective. Absent this balance of perspective, we have a very biased view on ourselves. We have biased expectations. We have biased views on ourselves and that can really affect our self-esteem and our self-worth. But when you truly balance out your perspectives, this is where you see the wholeness of who you are and the completeness of who you are. And this is where you can be objective at where you're at. And at the same time, this is where you have your self-worth. So that is point B, to balance your perspectives on yourself. Point letter C is to choose your inspiring problems. Most people go through life and their career and their relationships, they let problems show up in their life. They let problems come, show up, and then they deal with them. But what if I told you that you don't have to wait for problems to appear? Because if you don't take empowerment, if you don't take control over the problems that come into your life, then problems will come into your life unexpectedly. But you have the empowerment to choose what problems you desire to have. And if you were, it would be wise if you were to choose problems that are inspiring to you, problems that are very fulfilling to you to solve. And when you are on that way to inspiring problems, filling your days at solving these inspiring problems, what happens is that your self-awareness will eventually increase along the way because you're going to be naturally inspired to solve those problems. You're going to be naturally fulfilled at solving those problems and you're going to work hard at it because it is aligned with your highest values. So when you choose inspiring problems, what's going to happen is you're going to see each problem will have a seed of opportunity as well. And when you see that seed of opportunity, you're naturally driven to work at it. You have resilience along the way. You're not going to go to procrastinate on it and you're going to be good at it because this is something you will be naturally inspired to do. And you'll have the resilience, the perseverance and your self-awareness increases as well. Point letter D. So A was to ask empowerment, awareness inducing questions. B was to balance your perspectives. C was to choose inspiring problems. And point letter D is to determine your values. Your values are very close to you. They are very close to your identity. Your values are true to you and your life demonstrates what your values are. You can't help it, but you will live in accordance to your highest values. You'll be inspired towards your highest values and you will make actions and decisions according to your highest values. And your values are not what you think they should be. Your values are not what you think you should be doing and definitely not what others tell you you should be doing. Your values come from within. So when you determine what your values genuinely are, not what you think they should be, not what you hope they could be, but what they genuinely are and your life is demonstrating it, this is what allows you to have the highest level of self-awareness. Because now you know what's truly inspiring to you. 
when you uncover your values, this is now you know what is truly, truly fulfilling to you. And now you know what if you work in this area that you can have self-worth, it increases your self-worth. And this is also the path of confidence, the path towards greatest self-confidence. And as along the way, you're, you're practicing the points A, B, C, and D as well. And accordingly, you're making steps, striving towards solving problems that are inspiring to you in alignment with your highest values because you are aware of them. So this is really what creates the deepest level of reflective awareness. So you start with self-awareness and as you go along the way, you have what's called reflective awareness. And this is where you are truly present and you are your authentic self. So these are the four simple ways to increase and improve your self-awareness. And I have a video coming up next. So this is on how do you know yourself? How do you get to know your true self? And as a result of getting to know your true self, this is how you can be authentically you and lead from your authentic self. So that video is coming up right after this. Stay tuned and I will see you there.